Great. Yeah. Thank you. Even do you want to give the rest a couple minutes or shall we go and let the newcomers sort of straggle in? What do you think? We have 25 on so far. I think I still see, I mean, uh, I don't see some folks that I'm expecting, but um, we're just starting off with some intros so they won't miss too much if we get started and keep everyone on schedule for the day. Sure, that's great. Okay, so I'll begin then. Uh, welcome. I'm just going to let you guys know, we can only stay on for about a half hour. My oldest daughter got a cheerleading competition, so I'm going to go to that, and then when I'm going to come back, I'll rejoin, if that's okay. That's great. Thank you for being here. We appreciate that. And um, we're recording the whole thing, so you could watch what you missed later if you have time. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> This is great. It's nice to see all your faces. And um, I think after so many years, it's really nice to also know each other a little bit and talk about our wish for skating and um, our jobs as biologists in Ottawa. Congrats, Ella. <laughs> it's fantastic. And our cheerleading competitions. Amazing. So thank you all for being here. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Helen Damaris. I'm a scientist at the Hospital for Sick Children. I'll, I'll be your co-host today. Um, I'm a steering committee member of the Canadian Retinoblastoma Research Advisory Board. But of course, most of the work is done by Ivana Rostevsky, our parent in research, who you all know, and will take over the mic in a short while. Um, she's a parent in research and project coordinator at Sick Kids, where we run most of the CRAB activities. She's been a steering committee member of CRAB um, and leads most of the activities and organizes the events like today's um, as well. So before we, we really get started into the content of today's meeting, I wanted to pause um, and begin the AGM by acknowledging that uh, we're meeting on land that has been inhabited by Indigenous peoples from the beginning. And as settlers, we are grateful for the opportunity to meet. And we thank all of the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. And because CRAB is operated through Sick Kids, we wish to acknowledge the land on which Sick Kids operates, which has been the traditional land of the Huron Wendat and Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. And Toronto is home to peoples from all across Turtle Island. Sick Kids is committed to working towards new relationships that include First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people, and is grateful for the opportunity to share this land in caring for children and their families. And we also recognize that some of you are joining us today from many places near and far and acknowledge the traditional owners and caretakers of those lands. Um, our work today is going to aim to strengthen retinoblastoma research collaboration between patients, researchers, and health professionals. And specifically today, we're centering our discussions on sharing research results with our community in ways that inform, in ways that educate, and in ways that inspire. And so I like to think about how our work relates back to Indigenous peoples when I, when I give um, a land acknowledgement like this. And I try to learn a little bit each time myself. And um, so I just wanted to share that for Indigenous peoples, stories have been a principal way of educating the mind, the body, and the spirit. And so with that in mind, um, I'd like to invite you all to share your stories today to inform, educate, and inspire our, com our community as we set our agenda for the year ahead. Would anyone else like to add something um, relevant uh, in this moment where we pause to acknowledge uh, this Indigenous land? Okay, all right, thank you. So a little bit of a background, most of us um, already know this, but just in case there's some new people, um, for more information about CRAB and, and patient partnership and research, there's our booklet that's available online. Um, if you can't find it on our website, please let us know. Um, and uh, we can put a link up in the chat um, as well um, if you can't find it. Some common terms we'll be using today. Um, I know they're they're not ideal for some people, but these are the ones we've been using for a while and they're open to discussion. But for today, if we say patient, we mean anyone with personal experience with retinoblastoma. That includes their informal caregivers, family members, friends. So it's not just an individual who's receiving treatment at this moment. It could be someone who had retinoblastoma as a child and is now an adult. 
Um, it's a it, it's a term that's trying to be all encompassing, but we understand it may be used in different ways. So for today, patient means lived experience, personal experience, and non-patient, everyone else, anyone with professional experience uh, of retinoblastoma, that's research, that's health professionals. And we know there's overlap um, because uh, you can actually be in both categories and we have very many examples of those. So our annual general meeting today, um, it's intended to review our accomplishments to now, to reflect on lessons learned and develop a work plan for the year ahead. And we also want to welcome new CRAB members um, who are here for the first time. This is how we've structured our, our day today. Um, I won't take much longer with the with the welcome and introductions. We'll do a brief icebreaker just to make sure we all know each other, do an overview of the 2024 goals, and then um, do a little bit of a uh, brainstorming um, for strategic planning and sharing research results. We'll take a short break, and then the work uh, continues with breakout groups, smaller groups that will focus on different elements of how we re share research results as CRAB. And we'll convene again to um, make decisions and agree on actions before closing the day. So now, uh, if you're all okay to that, I know it's the first thing in the morning, if, if you'd like to turn on your camera so we could take a group photo before we begin. Um, even any special instructions for this one? No, just we would love to capture the moment. So we're not all together, but we'd still like to capture the moment of us being together online. So we, I have a volunteer who's gonna be taking a screenshot and if they can put, sorry, um, if, they, if we can change, if you can change your screen, just our volunteer to the grid view so you could see all of us. Um, and if you can give us a countdown to the picture taking so we can smile. Great. I guess you can stop sharing the slides so we can see that. Yeah, but I, I'm taking the picture. So if we can just all put the perfect. Oh, you can see us all as grid? Yeah, I can see you all oh, as grid. Oh, fantastic. I didn't know that part. <laughs> Let's wait a few more seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna time this with this screenshot. So three, two, one. We'll do one more. Three, two, one. Thanks, Adam. Perfect. It's awkward to, to look into the camera and not the photos of everybody. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks, Adam. Okay, so... um. We've done Zoom before, so I'm going to go over a couple of reminders that we've um, shared in the past. So in case there's any new people or um, uh, just so we can all be on the same page. So some housekeeping notes are if we can keep our mics off during presentations, uh, but cameras on just so that it feels like the speaker is speaking to a group of people. Um, and then um, we can always unmute and turn our mics on to chat when we're having brainstorming and sharing ideas. So um, just to limit the noise. And for the best view, it would be if you're in the menu, you can change your view to speaker view so you could see the presentation and the, um, the little window of the speaker instead of the gallery view, which is the view of all the, the grid of all the attendees. So that would be the easier view to have a best experience. And we do have closed captioning available, which would be in the menu bar, the Zoom menu bar for anybody who would like to use that. Um, and while Zoom is not going to be the only way we're going to be communicating today, there's going to be some other activities we'll be doing. Zoom can be the way that you can communicate if you don't want to use something else. So we can do things like raise hand function, which is in the Zoom toolbar. Um, you can type your questions in the chat, which can be read out loud by our volunteers on your behalf, or you can private message one of our volunteers and share your, your comments and they could post it and or share it for you. So um, our volunteers will have, um, we have, there'll be 
titled as volunteer. Um, so you'll be easy to find them. And there's an asterisk in the front, so they'll be top of the list when you're searching who to message. So we can do a quick test. If you want to test out your raise hand function, raise your hand or type in the chat, yes, if you have snow on the ground. I see there are hands being raised. It works. <laughs> Okay, so lower those hands. If you can turn off your hand raise function, perfect. Now raise your hands if you don't have snow on the ground. I see hands going up. And I see chat being used, so perfect. If you do have any questions or you get stuck um, and, and um, need some assistance, please connect with one of our volunteers. And if you're having any technical issues, please email retinoblastoma.research at sickkids.ca. Somebody will be monitoring, is monitoring that email. Okay, we can raise our hand, we can lower our hands, please. So I'll be starting off with an icebreaker. This is gonna be a fun activity to a little bit get to know each other. We can learn a little bit of who's here and what are and um, who we are outside of our roles. So I'm gonna attempt for us to create a word cloud and a word cloud um, co collects everyone's responses and shows it in a visual way so that the words are bigger or smaller based on how many people have the same response. So for example, this is a word cloud of, um, I'm going to say it's words associated with the with the library. So somebody, um, there's a lot, a lot of people who wrote books when they think of library, and very few people said university when they think of the word library. So that's how the word cloud is going to come up. You can add your ideas to the word cloud um, by thinking of an answer to the uh, sentence, I am dot, 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 I am an uh, I am a hiker, I am a baker, I am a gamer, I am a dancer. So um, I'm gonna share the link, the link will be shared in chat or you can use your phone and you can scan the QR code. Either way, we'll get you to a list of um, spots that you could fill out up to four answers to the I am question, or please write them in the chat as I mentioned previously and our volunteers will add it for you. So I'm gonna um, turn off my screen so I could share the word cloud and you guys could see how it looks being populated. Okay, now I can see that it's it's growing based on people's responses. We can't see it, Ivana. Oh, sorry about that. How about now? Nope. I think you're still sharing your um, PowerPoint. There we go. Nice. All right, we have 35 responses so far. So what I can see is we have um, musician stands out. So there's more than one musician. There's hiker, cook, singer, father. These are the ones, mom. These are the ones that are coming up with more than one um participants adding the same words. So you can see how the word cloud's changing as more results are coming in. We have artist, singer, and then a lot of individual responses. There's a foodie, a volunteer, someone who's a skier, someone who's grateful. Coffee drinker, yes. <laughs> Mm 
We have a superhero, a cellist. That's amazing. Maybe we can incorporate that into our symposium. We have basketball fans, child life specialists, travelers. Okay, so I'm going to save this word cloud and I'll share it with you guys. Um, we'll share it maybe on our social media, on our website, or um, um, in the email after our uh, meeting. So I'm going to exit out of this and go back to my presentation. So that would, the idea of the word cloud was just to see while we're all here working on one activity together, we want to move research forward. Um, and today specifically, we're setting a plan for how we're going to share research results. We're also other things. And when we come together and we bring all our other uh, specialties and expertise together, that's how we can be an amazing group. So we need all those expertise to be creative, do creative things, think of new ideas and keep building crab into more and more amazing. Um, so I'm gonna move next to overview, uh, crab overview and 2024 goals. And I will be doing a little bit of a background. I will share some past goals and what we've done. And then I'll share with you what our 2024 goals are, which will lead into our planning session. And before I start diving into the details, I just wanted to share some feedback from CRAB participants. So people who have participated in CRAB activities in the past. I have pulled some quotes from um, the registration form that people have filled out and from past activities that people have provided feedback on. So somebody said that participating in CRAB events is a great way to become involved and give back to those whose RB journey may just be beginning. Being involved is a win-win situation. Hosting a cup of tea was a great experience and I really enjoyed feeling like I was giving back to the Red Noble Swimmer community. And I have participated in previous AGM, symposium and cup of tea presentations. It's a great way to gather knowledge about what is going on with respect to retinoblastoma in Canada. It is also a great way to become involved and give back to those RB journey, whose RB journey might just be beginning. Sorry, I said that one, duplicate. Um, I really enjoyed the discussion with patients and other providers. Somebody also said being part of CRAB community has been both informative and empowering. I'm humbled by the dedication of the researchers, clinicians, and affiliated health staff and grateful for those for the work everyone does. My girls love going to Toronto for the weekend and participating in something related to retinoblastoma that doesn't involve care related to cancer treatment. They love the child life program and crab camp and meeting other children um, through the program as well. By participating in crab activities, I can help shape a positive future for my son, for my son and help others in that process. And I enjoy the involvement of physicians, researchers, patients, and families from across the country sharing multiple viewpoints and perspectives. And presenting a cup of tea and having a blog post written about my book was a fulfilling experience for the extraordinary eye. So this is how other uh, members of the Canadian Renewable Soma Research Advisory Board feel and just shows how being involved has an impact, not just on our community, but on the individual and the families too. So I've been talking about the CRAB community, but let me step back and explained who's in the crab community and how do we all fit in here. So as I explain, think about yourself and where do you see yourself in this um, um, schematic. So what I'm showing here is a, a circle with um, three sections inside. The main circle is um, orange and has the retinoblastoma community. Um, that is anyone who is professionally or personally connected to retinoblastoma in Canada. So that's everyone just automatically falls into that bucket. Now, a subset of that circle, it's a smaller circle within it. It's a green circle that's labeled RB Research Community. And this is everyone who is part of the retinoblastoma community and is interested 
in research and the folks in the RBA research community sign up through our um, website or from the booklet or um, different sort of ways that you can sign up to join the RBA research community. And then within the RBA research community is a smaller blue circle crab of CRAB, the Canadian Renoblosoma Research Advisory Board. And members of the Canadian Renoblosoma Research Advisory Board participate in patient partnered research and related activities and events. So they're more than just being interested, now they're actually helping and being part of the research process uh, and being partners. I would say that you guys here today, everyone who's here is in that blue circle, we're all participating um, in activities and events. So if you weren't quite sure where you fit in, you're in the CRAB circle. Um, and CRAB itself was created to lead the patient, uh, the Renoblosoma patient engagement strategy. The three aims of the strategy include to share research results with patients, to identify and include a large and diverse group of patients in research and to promote research that is created and led by patients. CRAB was designed to be led by volunteer patients, health professionals and researchers and administrative support to be provided by the Renoblosoma research team based out of SickKids. The structure of CRAB includes um, the steering committee, which Helen had mentioned in the beginning, um, which is responsible to ensure the annual goals are set and progress is tracked. Um, Helen is the non or the research co-lead and I'm the patient co-lead. And the members of CRAB also, oh, steering committee also manage the CRAB tools and then we have the support network who helps manage those tools, which includes volunteers and um, which includes volunteers who are here today. Um, members of CRAB are those who participate in patient partnered research and related activities and events. So being a member of CRAB is not a sign up or part of something that you have to be an official member of just by attending, you're here and you are part of CRAB. You can draw from personal or professional experience to promote patient partnership and research and sign up to the Canadian Renoblosoma research community. And that is the way that you find out about um, events that are happening, research opportunities and other, um, and much more. So we'll share that in the chat as well. If you have not um, signed up to be part of the RB research community, please do so. If you're not sure if you have, you can um, uh, send us an email and we can double check for you. Mm -hmm. But make sure you're signed up because then you'll you'll know when the next events are and then you can be involved in all those great things. Um, you can learn about more great things. So um, what have we worked on in the past? So our past goals are usually set during our annual general meeting they align with the three aims of the patient engagement strategy, and they're reported on throughout the year in the quarterly general meetings. We have, uh, just as a highlight of types of goals that we had set in the um, more recent years, we've been hosting cups of tea, and that has been part of our goals. Um, we had worked on developing a way to share the information about our RBA research community and um, having it in a clear, uh, showing the composition of the participants. Um, we also worked on raising awareness to of project-specific patient partnerships that are solving the top 10 Renoblosoma research priorities. In the bit earlier years, we were uh, working on developing the website. Um, before the pandemic, we had awareness tables and the focus on growing those potentially. Um, before that wasn't an option anymore. We had focused on the registry and um, which we call the RB Research Community now and growing the membership in that. Uh, we developed the priority three study and used the website to show um, the research for the top 10 renewable research priorities and engagement. So while the 
goals are set, there's still other things that come out of CRAB that are achievements associated with the goals. I just wanted to highlight and share with you that um, we should take some time to celebrate. So we have been working on the cup of tea, uh, which falls under the share research results um, and developed a toolkit and are working on a manuscript to, to share with that process for including a large group. Um, we had developed the RB Research and You booklet that Helen mentioned at the beginning that has a lot of great information on how to get involved in information about CRAB. And um, we had, so to share research, to share um, the composition of the RB Research community, we had developed an infographic to share it. Um, and then for promoting research, there's been all different things happening, most of them being some publications. Um, one, two, five published papers, one in the works, and then that cup of tea, cup of tea manuscript will be worked on as well. So there's um, great things that are coming out of CRAB and these publications are all co-authored with our partners, patient partners and non-patient partners. So the goals that we had set for 2023 included um, for sharing research results, we wanted to have four cups of tea, four cup of tea events and the recordings that go along with it. Cup of tea has a live event, a you, um, YouTube um, video that's uploaded after the event, as well as a Spotify podcast that comes up after the event. Uh, include a large and diverse group uh, of people is collating metrics about the retinoblastoma research community. And for promoting patient partnered research was to raise awareness and facilitate participation of patients, researchers, and health professionals. And as we go along to see the progress of each, for the sharing research results, four cup of tea events and recordings were held and recorded and shared. So we were able to, we reached that goal. Uh, we had um, four cup of tea quarterly events throughout the year. So that was achieved. Congratulations um, for including a large and diverse group. We wanted to collate metrics about the retinoblastoma research community. We wanted to see who was missing, uh, what we needed um, to do to make sure we have diverse group of people represented and to hear all their voices when we're doing these kinds of meetings and making plans that all the different experiences are captured. So we wanted to see a clear view of who's a member. Uh, so the infographic has been created and we will continue to share it um, to our, uh, this year as well. Uh, for promoting patient partnered research, raising awareness of and facilitate participation of patients, researchers, and health professionals. Um, we have ways that we have engaged as traditional subjects and as partners, and just some examples have been um, studies that um, had patients as um, subjects including the priority three study, evaluating psychosocial needs. And then there was a study for um, patient reported outcome measures where people reported on a questionnaire to test out a questionnaire. Um, and as partners, the priority three study was developed and created with patient partners and continues to be worked on with patient partners um, throughout the life of the project. We also had the RB Journey Map manuscript, which was written with our patient partners as well. Um, there's also ongoing priority research happening with um, researchers addressing priority one, which is the early diagnosis. Okay, so what goals are set for 2024? To include a large and diverse group, um, we will continue to up, update the infographic quarterly and share it at our quarterly meetings. And we wanna now 
that we know who's missing and that who we want to um, connect with more. We want to go back to looking at our members of the RB research community and um, track that we're adding new members. So adding 10 patient members and 10 non-patient members to promote patient partnered research. Uh, our goals are to host three research workshops to facilitate patient and non-patient engagement and identify and share four patient partner opportunities. And for sharing research results, our goals are to have four cup of tea events and recordings. So the cup of tea to continue, um, enhance website design as per the AGM co-design sessions, which will be happening this afternoon um, or next, uh, creating four blog posts covering research results written by patient and non-patient partners, again, which will be developed further um, through today's meeting, and having one partner to support one blog creation and a partner to support a cup of tea development to have, so growing our, uh, somebody to help with the creation and development of some of the information. Does anybody have any questions about the goals that are set for 2024 or how we have achieved the 2023 goals? Yes, um, Catherine? I think this is a wonderful way to summarize what's been going on. I wondered though, if our, our cup of tea, which is sharing research, isn't sharing this group's research, it's sharing research in general. Are you considering moving more into sharing the local or national research, current research, as opposed to the publications that are that people choose? Yeah, that's a great question. So we will, that'll be one of the items we'll be working on today, where we will decide on what um, uh, the themes that we should be focusing on and at our work breakout groups, we will then decide as a group, which, um, what do we wanna know more about that theme and what are the articles that are relevant for that theme? So that when a patient partner um, is interested to do a cup of tea, now they have the resources that this is the most, these are the articles and the main topics that the community wants to learn more about. Ella? Thank you. Um, yeah, this is, our, uh, the presentation format is really nice, <laughs> I just have to say. Um, uh, so my question is for the research workshops, what will the theme of those workshops be? What's the focus of them? Um, not set yet. So these research workshops, This was for the those were what we're going to do at the AGM. Not oh, I think perfect. right. Okay. We're not we're not sure yet. We have some ideas, and maybe um we could identify today who wants to help us <laughs> with those. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Cool. Thanks. In in the past, we have focused research workshops on um the top ten priorities. So. Yeah. Like last year, one of them was directly to look at the results of trialing the journey map, priority nine, or how to understand the sequence of patient care. And so we worked with a group to start summarizing our results in the manuscript that even I mentioned is under review. In the early days of the research symposium weekend, we also invited outside experts to teach us the basics of patient engagement in research to understand how it works. So there's any number of ways we can do it. In the, in the later years, we've been focusing on research projects that we're all trying to move forward. Um, but yeah, if, if there's interest. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thanks. Thank you, Helen. Sorry, I forgot which, um, I got a little bit flustered on which slide that that research workshops was on. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions about the 2024 goals or past goals? Okay. So um, we are ready to um, start 
our strategic planning for sharing research results. And I'm gonna ask Helen if you could tell us a bit about what we're gonna be doing in this session. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay, I will then share my screen. Okay, great. We're ahead of schedule as well. Uh, can you see my screen? See your screen, don't see presenter view. See, oh. uh, unless this is my slow internet. <laughs> Maybe because I'm working through, so yeah. Browser, yeah. Let me. I never save these to my desktop, but I will open a desktop app. Even do you have the slides still? Oh, there we go. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Looks perfect. Okay, good. Fantastic. Sorry about that. I guess it's about time I had some technological bloops. I'm always righteous about uh -huh. this, so <laughs> serves me right. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So now's our strategic planning session where we're going to start thinking about um, one of these goals. And just to give you an orientation, I'll give a little bit of a background on this goal, the objective of today's brainstorming session and introduce the activity. Even a nicely highlighted the three main aims of the CRAB patient engagement strategy and outline the goals we're gonna be working towards this year. And so the three main aims have always been to identify a diverse group of stakeholders, sharing research results with those stakeholders, and then co-creating research and so why are we just focusing on one of these aims today? We've already done quite a bit of work in years past to identify and engage um, diverse group of stakeholders, which we're now figuring out how does that work? Um, we have that lovely booklet. We've got the infographic where we've collated the results so we know exactly who's in our group and who we need to reach. And so um, we have the ideas there. Let's see how they work um, outside of this meeting as the year progresses. For co-creating research, as we just mentioned, that's the focus of the 2024 research symposium. It's coming soon. And while it would be nice to spend today maybe thinking about what those workshops can be, maybe we can do that offline for those that are interested. And so sharing research results is um, we're at a place now where we think we could really benefit from the minds that are here today to really um, strengthen that aim together. And so I wanted to take a step back and just remind ourselves, why is sharing research results even a CRAB aim? Why are we aiming to do that? When we first launched CRAB, we did a research study with patients and we asked them to tell us, how do you understand the research that's happening? Um, what would you need in order to engage more as partners in research? And so what we heard, and, and we published this a few years ago in the citation at the bottom, is that patients want to improve knowledge. They want knowledge uh, and, and that information to come from trusted sources. So not just a random internet site, but uh, a valuable and, and valid source where they know that what they're hearing is, is the truth. And they also wanted this information to come in accessible formats. And of course, all of this is, um, although the the, information on how we'll share research results came from the patient community, you can also imagine that this is really important for the non-patient community as well. As a researcher myself, I don't know about um, all the different research that's out there. And sometimes if it's from a field that's not my primary field, it also is kind of nice to get a plain language summary and um, information in an accessible format so I can sort of delve into that research myself. And so when we share that research, what, what are we really um, gaining from it? What are the desired impacts of sharing research results with our community? Um, that leads to a community with enhanced knowledge, at least that's the aim. Um, it might help us improve our partnerships. I've put the little icon of people dancing instead of the traditional shaking hands, because I think 
it's actually telling we've got a lot of musicians and artists in this group so maybe our partnership is a different <laughs> needs a different icon um, when we know what we're doing and we can simplify that information and really understand it we can really um, think of ways to partner and, and work together and when our knowledge is enhanced in that way, we then have the ability to be inspired and innovate and come up with new ways. And that's really the aim. Um, if we can share research results with our community, then we're really empowering the other two aims of the strategy. We're facilitating the ability for us to be able to co-create research. And we're also providing opportunities that might engage those um, those people we want to reach but haven't yet when they see all the exciting research that's happening. So we need the activities for people to engage in for them to come out from the background and join our community. So I had AI generate an image of um, what that patient partner research might look like. And it gave me a bunch of kids in a lab really happy and playing. Just so you all know, those beakers, a science lab never looks quite so colorful. <laughs> But it's kind of nice to see what AI thinks research is, but that's the whole point of improving knowledge. So we know what does work in a lab um, or any other kind of science really look like. And so these are the five main ways we've been sharing research results through CRAB in the past. And even uh, um, introduced some of these and I'll just go into them a little bit more in detail. So there's five um, main buckets here. The first one we've been talking about is this cup of tea. And that takes, uh, so far has taken published research. So finished research that has been published in the scientific community through a research article. And we take that and with the help of uh, patient partners and non-patient partners, we produce language summaries. So one page simplified uh, summary of what that research has shown. We present that in a live online event every quarter, and the recordings are available on YouTube and Spotify. Social media and all the crab, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or now known as X accounts with the handles written here, those are how we, um, we mainly bring uh, the opportunity, the, the, we link to the tools that share research results. It's not often used to directly improve knowledge, but um, in some cases it, it has shared certain tidbits or facts about retinoblastoma treatment. It's not necessarily telling us about research results, but I like to think of it as um, a way of building the vocabulary of research. When we can use social media to define things and share little bits of information, it helps us all understand research a little bit better. We also have an e-newsletter. So everyone who signed on to that RB research community receives an email newsletter that links to information about the cup of tea or sometimes um, the blog. And that's the next bucket which on our CRAB website, which um, contains a blog. Sometimes we have information on research results um, or how a cup of tea went. So it links back to that plain language summary. Plain language summaries live on the website. And our first co-produced research project um, is presented in plain language. Uh, that's the top 10 research priorities. So each priority has a page. We had created an infographic to describe all the 10 priorities and also shows what work is happening towards those top 10 priorities. And then finally, the other way we share research results is through the annual retinoblastoma research symposium. We bring in experts, so patient and non-patient experts to um, speak in a panel discussion and interactive Q&A. And we also host research workshops where we learn together and co-produce some aspect of a research uh, project together. Maybe that's coming up with the question, designing the study or analyzing the results. And the, the focus of today's AGM, uh, we've indicated in an asterisk, we're, we will be talking about the cup of tea in one breakout session, the website in another, and social media and blog have been grouped together, um, and we'll work on those in a third breakout session. So now I'm going to just go zoom in to each of the ones we're focusing on today, one by one. So the cup of tea. This is related to Catherine's question. What research results are shared? 
So far, we've looked at published research articles that are related to retinoblastoma. The topics usually align with the top 10 research priorities. The way this research is selected is that the patient partner who volunteers to co-host the cup of tea that quarter selects an article they're interested in. And usually um, Ivana helps them identify a number of articles that might be of interest. They go through it and pick one that seems kind of interesting. We also make sure there's been no overlap with um, prior cups of tea. And um, then we identify a non-patient partner to work with the patient partner um, to produce that plain language summary and, and the slides for the event. And this happens once every three months. For social media, um, as I mentioned, limited research results are shared. Mostly we use it to share information about other events that share research. Um, or resources. Uh, so we might link to the website, we might link to um, the information about when the cup of tea is happening. This social media account, the social media accounts are really um, run by a group of volunteers, um, sometimes students in my lab who volunteer some extra time. And they choose what to focus on. Uh, Roxanne is a big uh, help in the social media team, as well as even a um, and so because of a, a lack of time, we usually just focus on crab events or existing resources. In the past, we had a few thematic months when our volunteer team was a bit stronger. Um, and you might remember some months we focused on explaining all the different types of therapy for retinoblastoma. I think one month we tried to explain a little bit about genetics. So as I mentioned, it's sort of building the vocabulary for understanding the most complex research. And in terms of the cup of tea, there's about five posts about each cup of tea each quarter. You can scroll through our past um, posts on Instagram and Twitter and see um, how often really that is. Then the website, um, we like to think of it as a home for where all our research sharing resources live. And so um, there's no active, you know, choosing of what research goes there. All the plain language summaries that we choose through the cup of tea process go there to live. All the top 10 priorities in that first co-produced research project are shared by there. Um, and so it's updated as needed to reflect what's happening in the larger group. The blog is one page on that website. And this has both research sharing information as well as event sharing information. So in terms of the research results that are shared, some posts in the past have been interviews with researchers to describe their research, or sometimes a researcher themselves has written something. So shown on the image here is a past master's student from my lab when she published her study on what patient reported outcome measures exist for retinoblastoma. So patient reported outcome measures are questionnaires that patients fill out to tell the doctors um, how they feel they are progressing in terms of their outcomes from their own perspective. And so she had done a review to identify what's existing and what has been used for retinoblastoma. And so she described it in a blog in plain language to share a bit of um, what her master's project uh, found out. Sometimes we've also included video summaries of research presentations that would have happened at a scientific conference. So there are some YouTube videos. If a conference has um, posted research presentations, we'll um, put the links there so you can see. And so uh, I know from a past International Society for Ocular Oncology meeting, there are videos of uh, Dr. Galley speaking, um, uh, sometimes there's also student poster presentations, so you can see what research was presented elsewhere. And so we have um, piggybacked on that to share those research results, although that doesn't have the element of um, curating that information to make it accessible. It's simply showing what's out there and, and putting it in one spot. Um, how, how is the research selected? There's no real strategy here. Sometimes it's just the timing. So it's, it just came out and, you know, Anna, for example, she was graduating, she wanted to share her research. So, you know, we had a volunteer 
sometimes we think about what aligns with the top 10 research priorities that we've identified and is it would be useful to share. And we try to think about things that might be of interest to patient partners or a patient partner might come uh, and, and ask us, you know, something that triggers, let's, let's put something on the blog. And um, the aim for the blog post is quarterly, but not all the blog posts each quarter actually share research results. When we have uh, shared research more systematically, and that's mainly the cup of tea um, and the selection of articles that become the plain language summaries, the research themes we've heard from patients as, as uh, important and what we've ended up sharing had to do with these main areas. So screening for retinoblastoma, new treatments for retinoblastoma and how they work, psychosocial effects of retinoblastoma, genetics, uh, long-term follow-up and survivorship, as well as vision outcomes. And, and um, today we can think about um, these themes as well as other themes, or maybe uh, delve more, more uh, closely into each one to find out what aspects of these themes might be of interest to our community to learn about. So our objective with the um, strategic planning session we'll go into in a second is how should CRAB share research results going forward? So we have all these tools. I've just showed you how some of them are more systematic in their research selection than others. Um, and we want to focus on how we might be able to harmonize those. And here's another AI generated image of a girl in the lab. AI doesn't know what lab gloves look like. <laughs> Perhaps another area also. Sometimes, you know, the re sharing research results, as I mentioned, it's important to share research results, but sometimes the small details of how research is done is equally as important to, to share. I think AI is sort of a reflection of what is known in general. And I think there's a lot of mystery around what happens in labs. Um, so today we're deciding, we can think about what we're deciding on in, in three main areas. So what are these research themes we want to focus on? What are we most interested in learning about? What do we need the most education on? Leadership. So who can we engage? Um, some volunteers that might come to Woodwork to help make these research sharing efforts sustainable over the next uh, year or more. And given that we've just shown you all the tools and how some of them are not working as maybe efficiently um, as, as they could, we want to think about harmonization. So how can all these tools we have better align with each other um, so that we are meeting our goal of sharing research results with our community efficiently? So the activity is a guided strategic planning session. We're going to use... Um, a, a Miro board, which we've used in the past. Um, the link will be put up on the chat and I'll also share my screen and our notes can take our, if, if you don't want to actually go on the Miro board, you can speak up, put it in the chat and the volunteers will populate the Miro board, which we'll show on the screen in a second. We're gonna start in four steps. So first just remind ourselves what the for what the goals are for sharing research results for 2024. We'll reflect on our own experiences with the website, cup of tea, and all those tools we mentioned and think about what worked, what didn't work. Then the bulk of this is idea generation, thinking about those research themes, the leadership, how we harmonize efforts. And then the fourth step, we'll go into our breakout sessions after the break to plan ahead. Any questions? The link has been put in the chat. And I think that was my last slide. Yes, it was. So I will stop share. Even do you want me to share the Miro board or, or were you planning on doing that? Sure, yeah, you could share while you're okay. sharing, if I can share some tips. So we have used Miro in the past, but to Anybody who's new or would like a refresher, when you're in the board, um, if you're trying to orient yourself to where you want to go, on the bottom right, um, it shows you can magnify or demagnify. If you hover over that area, there's um, a couple of icons that pop up. There's a full screen. 
There's a pin map, which is kind of looks like a folded map that's being unfolded. The pin map opens like a um, guide of where all the information on the board is. So if you end up veering off the page quite a bit and you're not sure how to get back, if you click on the pin map and then you can click on part of the page you want to come back to and it will zoom you back in. Um, so what you need to know for using the board is on the left side of the board is all the little tools that we could use. Um, the one where the pointer, the cursor is, if it's selected, then you can click on the sticky notes and move them. Um, if it's not selected, then you'll see the little hand instead of your cursor, and then you could grab the screen and move it. So make sure you're in the hand, you have the hand on the screen, so you're not sort of picking objects and moving them around instead. Does anybody have questions about that? Oh, um, yes, Catherine. Hi, I'm sorry to be talking again. Maybe it's my way of keeping awake. Um, while, while you were both talking, I looked at the CRAB website to make sure I wasn't missing something. Um, this is sort of an overall question rather than a specific. I realize your technique here is to guide us into something specific so we have an outcome at the end. Um, but nothing you talked about uh, mentions advocacy. And I, I think it's one of those multi-pronged topics that we should at least acknowledge up front and hear from both of you how you see that fitting in. It, it seems to me that all of these techniques make uh, the retinoblastoma community a coordinated, responsive, uh, intersex site mm -hmm. for funders and for the health system, but mm -hmm. nothing that's described talks about advocating for more research dollars or for presence at certain tables or for inclusion in cancer care programs. And I just wondered if you could make some comment about that, because I think if we don't take it into account while we're doing this, we may miss one of our secondary goals. Thanks. Yeah, that's a great, great point. Advocacy certainly is a, a, a huge element. And I think the approach we've taken since the beginning of CRAB is to recognize that we have the real retinoblastoma advocacy experts are the Canadian RB Society. They advocated for genetic testing to be covered by provincial um, health. They also advocate and raise research funding dollars at times. Um, so, so they really are the experts in advocacy. Advocacy specific for research, um, that's a good point. Um, and for research dollars, it hasn't been on our strategy yet because I think our goal has been how do we first engage our community to understand and do research. There have been elements of advocacy connected to our research projects. For example, when we created our booklet, when we shared our um, top 10 research priorities, our funder at the time was the Strategy for Patient-Oriented Research, which is connected to the main health funder of, of Canada, Canadian Institute for Health Research. And so their recommended approach for advocacy was to teach some members of our team how to write a policy brief. And so we policy briefs, for those who don't know, they are another written form of communication for a specific audience member. So if you can think about research articles as targeting scientists and plain language summaries as targeting patient community, policy briefs target decision makers like um, government officials or people in the Ministry of Health or other decision makers like at funding agencies who they share um, uh, their research dollars with. And so our policy briefs, um, at least in one of the cases where we shared the top 10 research priorities, our main message to funding bodies was, hey, we did this top 10 priority setting exercise that identified research priorities that we would not have figured out were important unless we included patients. And therefore, since we found these really important research priorities with patients, maybe the funding bodies should consider funding research that involves patients in 
identifying those um, those priorities. And so that's the level of advocacy we've we've engaged in as CRAB. I think it's worth more discussions with the Canadian RB Society because, as I said, they're really the the main advocating uh, body in, in Canada. So we're open to collaboration, I think. Happy to hear more. I think today we want to focus on sharing research results, not necessarily um, sharing research results with our patient and, and non-patient community, not necessarily with decision makers, but maybe that's worth more talk at our symposium. I, what would you say, Catherine, or anyone else? <laughs> So from I, I think it's useful to hear you articulate it because it it isn't obvious anywhere else. And mm -hmm. I think it's just one of those things for people to keep in mind that um, what we do might inform those policy briefs. For example, right. you want to be able to use everything in multiple ways if you can. And just to remember that that advocacy portion may come out of the research priorities and the things we say about them. But I, I do think it's um, like an overarching thing that without that, the funding and the changes in policy don't happen. And so ultimately, it, it helps us, it helps the retinoblastoma uh, patient community as well as the research community. And it it is addressed in this. And right. And it it should be considered each time. And maybe it's one of the lenses we think about things through. Is there something that we can, can benefit from? Or can we feed it back to somewhere within the CRAB group to say this might be for advocacy? Just so we put an asterisk on it and say, we think this has, has potential here. Okay, great. Limited people, limited funds. Let's make the best use of it. Yeah, and I see Ella has a chat uh, comment saying conversation uh, with CRBS about advocating for further funding would be great. And Ella's a board member of the CRBS. So I think, right, Ella, you're, you're still on their board. <laughs> no, no, I never have been actually. Oh, but, oh okay, um, sorry. No, no, but I, um, but just um, uh, hearing the discussions and I also went to the, um, to your website the CRAB website, and I see the kind of distinctions that you have listed here between like the roles for each um, CRAB mm -hmm. and CRBS. And I think that that's a conversation they could welcome. And I really like the kind of trajectory and idea that Catherine had about how they like feed into each other and mm -hmm. working with CRBS as the advocate to then kind of implement the decisions that come from this group. I think that's a, I think, it, I think that's a, you know, Match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Any other comments before I take us through the the Miro board? I think people are are starting to and uh, feel free to interrupt me. I my whole screen. Oh, it says my Red. screen here is paused. Can you see it or no? Can you see the Miro board or I see oh, the I see Miro board, but I don't know who she seems frozen though. I'm not seeing a cursor. But... Okay. That's interesting. So one last comment. Sorry, I didn't finish some of the notes about participating here. So yeah. um, there was some Miro notes. Um, there's also, if you would not like to use Miro, that's totally great as well. You can use the chat function to add any comments, ideas, or notes that you wanted to share that you don't want to type in Miro. You can use it in the chat or you can message one of our uh, lab members, and they will anonymously post it for you. So there's a different ways to participate with this discussion. Great. Good. So I see that I'm screen sharing now and lots of people visiting. So we're going to start here at step one, orientation. This is a screenshot of even a slide where she said, um, but the sharing research results are uh, the goals for 2024. And I've sort of just, if we follow the arrows, we have four main goals we're pondering today. We want to organize four cup of tea events and recordings this year. Um, and I assume for next year in 2025, we want to enhance website design and content. 
We want to co-produce four blog posts covering research results and um, partners, identify partners. So um, one for co-producing the blog and one for supporting the cup of tea. And so each of these top three goals feed into a breakout session. The last goal about patient partners affects cup of tea and affects the blog, which is I've linked to website, but sort of also social media. Um, yeah, it's actually in the social media group, sorry, <laughs> but we'll live on the blog. So we're sort of, it's actually involved in all three. And so the discussions we're going to have right now in our strategic session will provide a starting point and some um, things to consider when we're all in our breakout groups. So that's the first part orientation. Um, and you can always feel free to either stop me to remind you what those research results goals are um, or navigate to the section on the Miro board. Any questions before I go further? Okay. So now we're gonna do some reflections. So step two is to think honestly and critically how is CRAB doing at sharing research results? And a guiding question you might wish to consider is, have you used a CRAB tool or participated in a CRAB event that shared research results? Why or why not? And for the first part, if you're on the Miro board, you know, if you've used a CRAB tool um, or participated in a CRAB event that shared research results, put your cursor where, like, is it a yes? Is it a no? Not sure or put it in the chat. And I think even I will tell us in the, in the chat. So there's a lot of us in yes. Visiting architect is out of the box. Not sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the, okay. Most of us are in yes. Um, any, anything in the chat, even I have one uh, yes so far in the chat. Anybody else, you could use chat or you could message one of our lab members. So right. one additional in chat and me, you can count me in in the yes. Well, that's good. That like, I mean, that's sort of obvious. I think most of the people on the call are, are um, very involved um, in CRAB. And so think about how you interacted with any of those, whether you visited the website or, you know, follow the social media etc. Um, you know, maybe if anybody would want to share right now, you know, why have you used that? Um, or, or why have you ignored something? Like for me, I really love cup of tea, because it's interesting for me to hear how a patient relates the research to their experience of um, having the parent of a child with retinoblastoma, or how they grew up and, you know, thinking about, you um, the treatments they received, it's uh, putting that research into the context of real life um, teaches me something I didn't know about. So that's what I get out of cup of tea. Anybody want to share? <laughs> if not, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so here we have uh, a nice exercise um, with a sailboat in the middle. It's an exercise to make us reflect on our experience with the website, social media, cup of tea, plain language summaries. Um, and the one thing I didn't mention, nope, that was it. <laughs> and thinking about what's working and what's not. So reflecting question is what is working? or what helped us move forward. So in the green stickies here, if you could write down, you know, what you think is a positive asset to our research sharing. Um, someone's gotten started here, offering several tools is seen as a positive. Then you can also think about what made us feel good. So uh, a sticky note to help us think about, you know, all different types of partners engaged. I'm going to add mine about how I learn from the patient experience. But then there's also things that have held us back. So I've already seen, you know, limited manpower, low engagement on social media. So those might be challenges we want to refer to in our 
breakout groups to try and solve. And also think about future risks ahead. So one idea is, you know, there's need for more volunteers. Um, perhaps Catherine's point on advocacy for research um, funding might, might be here as well. If we don't share research results with our community, then we don't educate and inform and prepare our, our uh, community for co-produced research. But if there's no funding for co-produced research in the future, that's also a risk. So it's all interconnected. I see a lot of um, activity here. Even is there anything in the chat? It keeps, I see the numbers keep going, but I I'm, I can't see them. We had additional people vote yes. So we had six okay. yes. Previous. Okay. Ella has her hand raised. Ella, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I struggle a lot with Miro board for some reason. Yeah. I don't, I've like never use it. And I, I anyway, so I'm just going to keep talking and writing things in the chat. I think I'll, yes. I'll keep trying, but um, no, don't, don't worry. That's also good because, you know, some people do better not talking. Some of us do better talking and someone else can write your ideas on Miro. I'm a talker and I get tired of listening to my own voice. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know that already. So, um, I, just to your point before where you were asking for feedback on how we use the resources, mm -hmm. um, I think, I, I hope that we use them in a really important way. Like I refer to the top 10 research priorities all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was an, a really useful exercise. Um, and we recently uh, depended on them very heavily for a grant application for the International Rental Estoma Con Consortium. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, you know, that's one way and, uh, you know, one funding, you know, potential hopeful, you know, funding um, that we use them. I don't know if you want to include that or if you want me to, I, I, I don't know exactly how. You, yep. Using like the top know. 10 priorities help us. Yep. Okay. In a, in a in grant application, you know, and it's like kind of co-developed, I guess, in that way. Oh, Caitlin's writing it down. Great. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Anyway, I'll keep trying to figure this out. <laughs> no, no <laughs> problem. Like, like such a, I use technology all the time and I'm just like, mirror board is just like a thing for me. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. Okay, so I'm seeing in wind helped us move forward, offering several tools available on multiple platforms, regular features, using the top 10 priorities as our foundation. Um. In what made us feel good, simple language, listening to diverse perspectives, lots of good feedback, good support of patient partners, all different types of partners engaged, being part of a team that is helping and sharing with others. Um, what held us back? I'm I, I'm going to say something from my own, you know, team of professionals. I think we could have more researchers. Uh, sort of step up. I know they're super busy and the researchers that have um, participated are really um, excellent and we're grateful for them, but it would be nice to uh, link up with more researchers. And I think if one thing people might not uh, know is it's part of a researcher's, you know, responsibilities to share our research results broadly including with patients. And so if we can get to a place where for those studying retinoblastoma, CRAB and our tools become, you know, a natural way these researchers and their teams can share their results, we're actually serving our community in, an, in, a, in another way. Because I think researchers are time crunch. Nobody has time to start a blog of their own. But if this becomes the way that we can share research results um, and the format is there, then it, we sort of kill two birds with one stone, if that makes sense. But so far it's been us going out and, you know, it's very patient driven, which is great because we have a strong patient community, but maybe thinking about ways that researchers or clinician scientists can, you know, find it, find us easily so that they're saying, Hey, I have this new paper. Anybody interested? That will come with time too, because of course we'll be interested in a paper that, a patient inspired the purpose for in the first place <laughs> but now we have um a, you know it's a it's a big mix of research up there helen can i interrupt sorry yes there's a couple folks that have messaged me that are having a hard time in Miro right now okay and um i think it's i can see if you zoom out far you see a bunch of cursors at the top and the bottom oh, I they're see. probably not 
it, it's difficult when you're not as proficient in this, you don't use every day to find the board. So could you just maybe yes. zoom out further? You'll see like five or six people that are just in space. <laughs> um, hey, come on. While I'm down here. <laughs> could you maybe come just on up? So yeah. Much. Caitlin. Yes. <laughs> Thank so you. to get there, folks, you just have to hit the plus there you go, and then yes. drag the board. Yeah, I don't know if that's okay. going to help, but I just thought maybe to give some instructions to the people that are struggling. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Caitlin. And then can you just, if, so like if I'm, I clicked on the link and I like see the board, I see part yeah. of it. And then how do I get my little cursor to have a name? So I can. We see you, Ella Bowles, you're there. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. you don't know. That's the thing. Is for someone else messed me up. How do I get a name? <laughs> it's automated. <laughs> so as soon as you log in, it will automatically give you either a you your own name if you have an account from previous, or it'll give you a, a an automatically assigned visiting name. Okay. So your cursor oh. will have a name automatically given to it. I think it's just the few people are struggling getting to the board. So it's a matter of if you're zoomed out far, try to use the yeah. plus and minus at the bottom. Yeah, I don't know if you can see yeah. my plus or minus on the screen or if that's not shown. Yes, I yes, I can. Yep. Yeah, okay, so you're going minus. Okay, and then how do you move around the board if you want to go somewhere? Can you just show us? I right, If you right-click, it gives you that hand, which allows you to move around without ah. touching things. You want to right-click to pull the board left to right. That's how I do it. And then you want to click with your left if you want to actually move something. But if you just want to move the board itself, you want to right-click and it gives you the hand. I'm so not technical, so there's a proper word for that, but it gives yeah, you the yeah, hand, I you pull the board. <laughs> okay, I understand. Okay, now I can actually do something. Okay, so what exercise are we working on again right now? <laughs> step two. Here, if you go the to sailboat. step two and the boat. Yeah. We're trying to aim for a tropical location for our next crowd meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. I see the boat. Okay, good. Okay, now I can actually start thinking properly, I think. Right. Okay. Thank or anyone you. else who would like to abandon Miro and, and say something in chat, you know, please go ahead or put your hand up and we will, uh, you know, tell us and we can fill it in. Um, there is a comment from Dr. Galley in the chat that just says, I would like to know how to recruit a patient partner into a new clinical trial. I see. Okay. So where would that go? Future risks? not knowing help yeah no clear pathway for researchers to yeah i would say that would be a, i guess we can call it a held us back maybe right yeah held us back yeah thank you okay. um i myself uh i don't know how to put this down without sounding like i'm attacking other people uh <laughs> I just for myself um like um i was in, unable to um i didn't have time this past year to put into uh, crab activity mm. um, and it's you know like volunteer effort it ebbs and flows yeah and um that's a like i can see that as a problem for myself if it's like you can't get my output on a consistent basis or anything like that and to right. for that and have backups and stuff so that's like a, something that kind of helps pulls us back yeah it's it's a good point like we yeah we don't want to be over over reliant on a few people because then we risk burnout and people's lives change and we even saw that ebb and flow with COVID, you know, people had lots of time in the first few months. We didn't know what to do with ourselves. And <laughs> I feel like we also, it was nice to have a community online when nothing else was happening, but yeah. No. Can I just um, provide the opposite perspective to that? Sure. I think that m many of these things are really defeating or, um, become very small if we're trying to accomplish them individually mm -hmm. and the beauty of a group is that if people understand they can plug and play as a group you can take something on even as individuals you can't commit and know that there are people to pick up on the group it still may still may require um more people to say that yes we've got the bench strength to say yeah but plug out and then plug in again whenever you can. But I think that's the reality for many people and many, many things now. And that, that the importance of staying strategic and together and then having an assigned, not lead, but co-lead on topics allows it not to burn any one individual out. And I think it's so important that you have intermittent participation rather than none at all because that that's the reality of modern life 
Right. And so it, it, it's not a bad thing. You can actually, maybe we should be focusing on how to take that and make it feel comfortable and not intimidating to people. You know, it shouldn't be a barrier to participation. That's a great point. I, I just kept thinking about the passing the baton so we can figure out what we need done, but break it up into manageable tasks that, you know, can go from one person to the other as their time allows. It might help us create a more sustainable structure because of the strength of our large group. That's great. Okay. Um, even though we have until 1145 for this whole exercise, right? Yes. Okay, should I move on to step three? Because there's a lot. It's 11, 11.40. 11.40, okay. So you can continue to hang out in this section of the Miro board. Um, I noticed there's a lot more people on the Zoom than have been able to enter Miro. So um, I'm going to ask Ivana to, to be my Zoom person to get feedback from, <laughs> from Zoom if it's missing on the board. I'm going to move the view to step three. So here I zoomed out and I'll zoom in and step three has two main parts. And now we're gonna be generating ideas. And so here we're having reflected on what's working, what strengths we have, what risks might lie ahead. We now want to create the knowledge base from which our breakout sessions will um, uh, will be based. And so um, we are aiming to consider what research themes we want, what the leadership, and perhaps thinking about that past the baton structure, given people's um, limited time available, and harmonizing all our platforms so that maybe that's another way to make things simpler. And so we're going to brainstorm some considerations that we, things we should consider Let's start there. What should Crab consider? So one, uh, if you are representing the patient side of things, please use a green sticky note. If you are representing the non-patient partner, use a purple sticky note. So the first exercise says, what should Crab consider when selecting research themes, when choosing patient partners to share research results, and when choosing non-patient partners to share research results. And so some things that are coming out now, selecting the research themes, um, areas with slow or no progress, such as child life supports for RB from diagnosis. Um, think about the previous research themes, maybe the top 10 priorities, RB clinical guidelines. Those all came from uh, non-patients. So let's see what the patients think. Uh, choosing patient partners. So different types of lived experience, maybe someone new to cup of tea. And for the non-patients, people outside Ontario. Um, I see a few patients adding on selecting research themes, new research, groundbreaking stuff, uh, updates on the progress of the top 10 priorities. Fantastic. Anything in the chat on this? Um, no, there, I, I don't see anything new in the chat. Anybody want to speak up or we'll come after you? <laughs> in terms of research themes, does anybody want to consider what research they learned about through CRAB and what was interesting or maybe what we missed that, you know, um, so just thinking about cup of tea, we had a really interesting discussion on molecular surveillance for second cancers, which has not yet started for retinoblastoma, but we brought in um, <clears throat> uh, researchers who are doing that for other types of cancers. We heard from um, vision scientists, I believe, about visual outcomes. But what did we miss? Um, we didn't really <clears throat> cover any ongoing studies because it's hard to relay research results in, in the middle of the project. Maybe that's an area to strengthen because, you know, would people like to know what research is happening and how can we educate our community about what it's like to give 
halfway results versus final results um because we don't want to misinform people either i don't think necessarily have any results for that you can just discuss this is what we're trying to do to figure it out or whatever right so um so that's something to discuss or like right now we've been focusing on research results but do we actually want to discuss research and progress, right? Is that an interest and something we should focus on? It sounds like maybe yes, Serge. Uh, yeah, to me, it's all it's all the same. It's all the same. Something yep. we tried to figure out is the same as we did find the result. Okay, all right, that's good to know. I agree. I think sometimes uh, it takes a long time to do the research and get to the conclusion. So hearing updates or along the way is 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 great. Fantastic. Can I ask one of the Mary last... said the same thing. She said okay, it would be good thanks. to have updates. Yeah, on ongoing research. Okay, I'm gonna maybe add it myself. One of the things with updates as well, I think, you know, it may encourage people to, especially the, you know, uh, patient partners, um, to become involved or to keep involved um, because sometimes uh, like the particular cup of tea may not be what they're interested in, but if they know kind of what's going on on a broad spectrum, they, you know, um, might stay more involved because mm -hmm. I think that's part of the problem too, is just getting uh, people to, um, you know, stay involved, stay committed, that type of thing. Great. Okay. I think um I think it's a it's a new format to think about because uh right now starting with a published research study means we have something documented from which our cup of tea co-hosts can start with so maybe the those in the cup of tea breakout session might think about how research in progress which doesn't have much except a protocol and maybe some very sciencey documents to work from it might require some more involvement of the the researchers to release um maybe take the lead on that and work with the patient partner to bring it to the community or other options. I don't know. <laughs> All to well, be discussed. <laughs> where, where you have expanded the cup of tea from a half hour to an hour, mm -hmm. um, would you be able to even do like the first or the last 15 minutes as, um, you know, just a little update about what's happening and then, you know, 45 minutes for the presentation. And, right and discussion i don't know i mean it's just a thought yeah no it's great thought that's fantastic so, so comments yeah. let yes. me share some comments in our chat um can we include a large a real patient can we include real patient partner involvement in the whole research project from start to finish um i.e a real co-investigator yes mm -hmm. that's actually highly um highly preferred <laughs> than the way most science is done. Um, it's related to our third aim of sharing research results. Uh, we've certainly done it with our priority three. It, we we work through some of those challenges. I think those of you who were co-investigators on those grants as patient partners saw how ridiculously last minute researchers work and how paper heavy it is to create these CVs, these academic CVs, our, our granting agencies have have heard the feedback though. And so now patient partners do not need to submit a whole science CV. It sounds like obvious things, but now they've simplified the process for patient partners being co-investigators, but certainly um, having patients be part of a budding research project um, is what our research projects aim to do. And if we could make it easier for scientists not already part of our community to join in um, and and meet patients from which they could build a, a project together, that would be ideal. Would that be one of the, an idea for choosing a non-patient partner to share research results is having um, a patient partner on their research? Would that be something we would want to consider? I'm afraid that I didn't understand, sorry. In our ideas, what should CRAB consider when choosing a non-patient partner to share research results? Would we consider 
our non-patient partners to have experience working oh, with patients or having them involved in their research. If we're gonna capture that idea on the board. It would be nice to identify any patient partners on retinoblastoma research who'd like to um, present that work. Yeah, I think that's that, that's a nice thing to consider. Are there any patient partners currently conducting research who'd like to present their own research? Yeah. Um, there was a comment asking to add to the patient um, section, which has been done about impact of RB on performing activities of daily living, both children and adults. And I see that's been added. Added, okay. And Next. that one, um, groundbreaking technology, even if not implemented, um, if for example, AI applicability to RB to help us get things done, helps other areas of, um, be interested in RB. So sort of like what we did with the, um, second cancer screening. It hasn't been implemented for RB, but we looked at the experience elsewhere. Okay. I just realized it's 1130 and I'm only at part A. So I'm going to switch over to the research themes. Oh, so good that you guys have been working on here. Thank you. So one, one comment about yes. which results shared with patients from the biobank from the chat. Biobank. Can I ask that one of the volunteers put that on the, on the board? We did. Is there? Oh, great. Yep. Okay, good. Thank you. So here are some ideas for research themes. Oh, there's biobank results. Showcase research with co-eyes. So showcase research with co-eyes, is that a research theme? Or, you know, we, the themes as we've been thinking about them have been survivorship, uh, maybe AI goes here. Uh, there it is. Okay, good. They're all here. All right. Um, any scientists on the call who are working on something that the rest of us need to know about? <laughs> so you can put your research themes here or call them out and you can put your ideas for which patient partners to invite. Ella, you're right there. Um, there's no other names for patients, but if you know people, it's sort of uh, past kids who participated in child life programming, unique perspectives. So here I think um, try to think of specific people we could reach out to and what you want them to share about versus the considerations, which is in the previous board. And then similar for non-patient partners. Hey, we've got Dr. Malapatna. Is he on the call or did he forget us and sleep in? Uh, well, I messaged him. I think he's not <laughs> feeling well, but he was going to try and join. <laughs> yeah, 3D eye models and red reflex. Um, I'm going to add Tim Corson because Tim Corson is an old friend from when um, I did my PhD. And uh, he recently moved back to Canada as a professor at the University of Toronto. Uh, and he, although his work has gone into other kinds of eye conditions, um, he does have some projects in RB molecular research. And I think coming back to Canada where we have a, a, a better RB research community than where he was in Indiana, I think we can maybe engage him in more stuff. Um, and we have Jessie Berry there. I'm guessing we want to hear about her aqueous humor research. I just added that, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to call on anyone, but uh, Lindsay, maybe I'm just going to remind you of <laughs> some ideas you shared with me about some themes you're interested in if you wanted to add to the board or I could add them on your behalf. Um, we also have some other suggestions. Allison Scallet was suggested. For what? Do we know what we want? She's done some RB work with uh, vision screening, vision screening, uh, or not vision, yeah, RB screening guidelines. guidelines. Um, for research, Ivana, theme. I, I, you better add what we talked about yesterday. Okay. I can't even remember. <laughs> That's how short okay. my memory is right now. <laughs> Um, for a new project, visual field of RB patients, how to correlate with life issues and jobs. Okay, a visual project field. idea. Project idea, sorry? I think that was just a new project idea. 
visual field of RB patients, how to correlate with life issues and jobs. Does she have a project or it's project generation? I think I'm suggesting a new project. It's what, okay. that's what my guess is. Uh, I so, just sorry, I just put an Allison is Jamie here. I just put okay. an Allison Scallet because she's got the RB guidelines that she did with Brenda. And I, yeah. I think there's some updating to be done perhaps to consider aqueous humor and stuff. So I just I think Brenda's Brenda's is a whole different uh research idea, I believe. Yeah. I okay. Yeah, perfect. I, the reason I'm, I'm, I want to keep us focused on sharing research results, sharing research that's happening, but anything in the realm of, hey, let's create this project together. Maybe it starts in the research workshop. And then when it's fully formulated, then we can bring it to the community. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Because I, I think there's, that's where I was sort of, I want to be responsible with what is brought to our community and in which platform. And maybe we can make those decisions today that when we're generating ideas and formulating what we're going to work on it's in a different format than this presentation format or sharing a document um, that might indicate something's happening because the last thing we want to do is disappoint the community and I know we all know here research takes time um, and this format certainly can be good for generating ideas as well but we want to have the follow-through so we're not just presenting a bunch of ideas that go nowhere and maybe the research workshops and creating those committees that are going to move things forward is where the new stuff goes. And then here we have more, um, you know, the, the ideas with legs already and uh, can be shared with our community. It strikes me that, and maybe I'm misreading things, that the second section of this board is primarily being populated with purple. Yes. Which is meaning it's a non-patient perspectives, theoretically. And so I just want to reiterate that it's okay if folks have ideas of research they want to hear about but don't know the names of people in that space that's what that first column's for so please even if you just have topics you want to hear about we'd love to have those ideas we can later do something further investigating to see the names of people that would be operating there so yeah thank you for that love to see more green. <laughs> i know i agree i was looking at all the pur the purple so it'd be nice to know and it makes sense that most of us non-patients are putting down our colleagues' names Absolutely. here. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to take over, right? So we want the patients to also be, you know, loud enough to tell us, you know what? You've been talking about your research too much, Helen. <laughs> we want to hear about someone else. <laughs> well, I think more as a, a, a on the patient side for me, it's uh I I can't think of these things to come up with. Uh, what I kind yeah. of use a menu to be like, oh, that one there seems interesting to me. Right. right? Um, and maybe I have time to put toward that or what, or ideas for that. Um, so I think that's a good consideration. Menu of potential research to select from. Yeah. And that kind of goes back to the idea of spreading the research being done, which is like, oh, is there a socket in that one that I'm, that I'm interested in? And maybe when you're saying things that are being done, they're like, we need help here. Right. That we need a person that does this. Something like that. Yeah. So a lot of these, um, we were thinking about harmonization of all our platforms, but perhaps it's harmonization of all three aims as well. You know, the, the research that's happening people involved and then how we how we share it yeah because the other thing I noticed on that the wording here is kind of like the research at, at it's at the beginning patient partners yeah. putting in ideas at the beginning and then there's a big gap and then research coming out and spreading that information that's kind of like what it looked like yeah you know, that's the goal yeah you're right um even I've, I've been too slow here, and I know your goal was for us to have themes for each of the months, but I think what we're finding is we don't have enough to populate that. Um, for the breakout sessions, do we we need to know what the themes are? Is that right? That yes, working? the help why would, that would be helpful is we have social media and blog working in one group, and then the cup of tea, and if we are aligned on the okay. Okay, so what's the best way to do this? Let's see, we've got Biobank, 13Q, Treatment Outcomes, Ocularis Research, 
it is a thing there's actually i didn't know <laughs> okay but that's good because like I, I don't know that the ocularists are doing it but you know um in the uk there's some pretty cool research coming out about using 3d oh, yeah. printing that to research prosthetic yeah, eyes, that'd be really right? interesting yeah <laughs> so yeah, i'd like um, to see that actually <laughs> yeah it, so it's that. not even research it's implemented to make up for their backlog during pandemic Oh, uh, yeah. I thought at more had, fields like, at yeah. more fields they're using it yeah oh, I really? thought it was under a clinical trial though because he presented at ISO as uh they're testing out the patient's satisfaction with what it looks like how it moves well nonetheless I think we need to hear about <laughs> and it would be kind of cool to invite a UK patient to speak about it yeah if people were interested, again, that came from the non-patient <laughs> side. <laughs> we can do some voting, though. Like, as Serge yeah. said, perhaps, we, like, this is a good... Obviously, what I'm seeing here is what research is happening is held in the minds of our non-patient partners. And this is a good forum to maybe start creating that menu of options where we're, we're sharing what we know. Um, but maybe there's a good way to vote on what we want to prioritize. Would it be worth looking at? Yeah, I'm sorry. We have a couple more in the chat. Okay. Um, better or best drug selections and rapid changes in response. The topic could be best treatment and saving eyes. So drug um, selection. Uh, and then also use of technology and AI by patients for daily tasks. So maybe we could do something about technology and and AI being the big topic. Those need to be purple, whoever's typing them in. They're oh, coming sorry. Oh, yes, sorry. Sorry about that. I don't mind typing them in, Helena. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'll change it. <laughs> um, acceptability, acceptability of using ability challenged by patients. Acceptability of using ability challenged. So would that be, Dr. Payton, is that more about our wording and phrasing and there are, it looks like there are lots of initiatives at the moment, including by, um, I think it was Apple I saw most recently, where they're really coming forward leaps and bounds. Uh, but in order to access it, you have to de declare or label what kind of ability challenge you have and maybe measure it. So Brenda asked about visual fields, some of its acuity, some of its other things. And uh, we heard a talk where somebody was talking about, yes, you can everything. How do we balance the two from the patient perspective to take it forward in research and forward with partners? Okay. I realize we're a little bit um, over time, but I do want to give everybody their break. How about we take our break now and return at noon? Um, we'll, we'll continue this exercise and then go into our, our breakout sessions. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Just as people um, come back, share my Miro board. So <clears throat> during the break, is everyone back? Ivana, should I keep going? Um, we have people coming back in. We're not. I think we're still missing a few folks. Okay. We're going to log back in. Hopefully. All right. Okay. And before I get started, um, just remind me the agenda we have. So we're, um, we're set for 12 o'clock to start our breakout groups that will go until 1.30. But so I have to continue this last bit before we go. So maybe we'll do 20 minutes here before we go to the breakouts. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so our busy bees in the background have been taking all your suggestions for 
themes um, and mapping them onto our top 10 priorities. Caitlin, are we complete or is are we still sort of dragging things in? Still dragging. <laughs> still dragging. <laughs> okay. Um, by no means should we stop uh, generating ideas for what we want to hear. Um, I noticed there's a couple people who maybe missed the morning or maybe just one. So <laughs> I'll um I'll explain that. Before we go into the breakout sessions, we've been uh, reflecting on how we've used the tools that share research results with our community and thinking about what we want to hear about and who we want to hear from in the year to come. And so we're going to use these ideas that were generated right now. We're going to drag them onto our structure of the top 10 priorities to see the ideas that we came uh, we came up with. Are they aligned with our top 10 priorities? It might be a way to start prioritizing the themes, maybe not necessarily the specific, you know, um, research that will be highlighted, but overall, uh, um, what we're gonna focus on, I noticed that um, Caitlin also has this other bucket. What's interesting is we focus on our top 10. And when I reflect back to the discussions that happened when we were selecting our top 10, I remember that we actually prioritize the list of top 30 we, from a list of 100 research areas. And the top 30, particularly number 11, I think, it's it might meet some of these um, other bucket. Um, I'm thinking we use number 11 to sort of, uh, I forget what it is exactly, but it supports the clinical trials and all the agents. Trials and novel agents, right? So if we're really thinking about coming up with new drugs or new techniques, um, <clears throat> we're talking about those kind of molecular things, AI. Um, and 12 is genetics and molecular. 12 is genetics, topic. okay. So, yeah, so, yeah. so I remember we had a lot of molecular researchers who were quite engaged at the onset of CRAB and when their priorities went down past 10, I think that was part of the reason they stopped engaging. Um, but I think also the fact that the molecular stuff wasn't up in the top 10 is because up till that point, we actually knew quite a bit what we're doing and that's affecting care quite nicely. Now, of course, technology has changed and maybe we might wanna think about priorities 11 and 12 um, as well, I don't know. Or you know, if we haven't solved number one to 10, and maybe we focus there. So that's where this discussion is. Um, I'll just go through them one by one as they keep getting populated. So sorry to interrupt. I think we're nearly we've dragged almost everything over, but oh, great. other ideas now that we see the categories. If other ideas pop up, you can add them to these buckets. Okay. And then I think we can maybe do a voting as to what we what um I guess we'll what we'll decide is what priority to focus on or miscellaneous in each of the quarters for the next two years. Is that the intention, uh, Ivana? Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this has a comment to share. Sure. Sorry, is, are you directing that to me? I sorry, I didn't hear your career. Um, you can go ahead, Ella. I oh. see a raised hand. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, sorry. I didn't want to interrupt, but Helen, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, um, that would maybe be a useful discussion for the symposium about whether or not we want to like think about priorities 11 and 12. Um, yeah. I don't know, like a breakout group or something. My brain is going all kind of idea ish and maybe. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's a good time to sort of revisit those priorities and these discussions are opening my eyes to what we could uh, have more deep conversations about the research that's happening and how it affects what we there's a lot of new stuff that has come up in the world and maybe when the time we were you know um thinking up of the priorities we didn't know how they might affect rb so yeah i mean it was like yeah. seven years ago right we yeah. did it in 2016 2017 i think um, exactly. yeah. yeah um and um and also what was what i noticed here is that um uh I, I feel like some of this, I, maybe I'm interpreting it incorrectly, but I feel like some of this is people saying we want to hear about these things and some of it is people saying we want to focus on these things for research. Mm. So I feel like this is a very like research engaged discussion just at the moment. 
meeting that we, you, yeah. So for today, what we really want to hear about is um, thoughts on what we want to share with our community through our yes. sharing platforms. Yes. Sometimes it goes hand in hand with exactly. what we focus on and exactly. <laughs> ourselves. And, exactly. And I'm hearing this intersection, you know, and yeah. anyway, so, I mean, I, I feel like that's a good thing, you know, yeah. um, makes our life easier like, maybe. Yeah. Anyway. Harmonization. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I'm just going to do a quick overview to show us what ideas we have for priority one, which is diagnosis, how to increase early diagnosis of RB. We have ideas to hear from Dr. Malapatna on his 3D eye models that are being used to better understand normal red eye reflex versus white eye reflex. Um, Alison Scallett and her work on screening for RB. Uh, priority two was second cancer surveillance. Um, and so um, one idea, second cancer probability for RB survivors, um, the potential for CFDNA for second cancer screening. We did do a, a cup of tea last year about that. We've, you know, another thing to think about is do we want to repeat certain elements um, to and use it as a way of building it on top of the knowledge we've um, shared already. We haven't done that before because cup of tea was so new. So perhaps the breakout group can decide on, on, on that as well. Psychosocial uh, is number three. So we had ideas like past kids who participated in child life, um, uh, you know, has participated, helped coping as a survivor. Um, Impact of RB on performing activities of daily living and kids and adults. Helen, to sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Can you maybe zoom in? People, uh, there's some comments indicating it's hard to I'm see sorry. what's in the boxes. If yes. you don't mind zooming in, that might be helpful. Is Thanks that better? Yep, yeah, no, that's good. Interruptions are good. Um, so psychosocial has uh, technology for AI and daily task coping perspectives regarding enucleation. I added this last one. There's a really interesting research coming from Yvonne Bar Bombard's lab about, she's not an RB researcher, but she's developing AI chatbots for genetic counseling and testing how well they work to communicate uh, genetic information. And so maybe it'd be interesting to hear how that might be applicable for, um, for us. Um, okay, follow-up. We've got a lot here too. So we've got transition to survivorship, long-term patient side effects of current treatments. Uh, we want to hear from Bruce Crooks, follow up, many dimensions of it. Uh, long-term side effects of treatment again. So I guess that's two for that one. So <laughs> um, Dr. Galleon depict, although depict is more than just follow up, it's also treatment, it's everything. <laughs> and drug selection treatment and saving eyes. I think that one is treatment, no? Drug selection? I don't know, I'm gonna move it. Correct me if I'm wrong. So treatment, prospective retinoblastoma treatment studies with long-term follow-up. So um, treatment outcomes, so how well do treatments work? Um, reminding us to keep uh, 13Q deletion, which is one specific way that the RB1 gene is um, uh, damage to cause RB and other um, challenges for these kids. So really thinking about um, ensuring we're being relevant to our, to our whole community. Um, Jesse Berry and Aqueous Humor uh, Research. Um, so she's doing some really exciting work on looking at the fluid at the front of the eye while a patient is being treated and seeing if we could discover markers about the tumor that's growing and figuring out from those markers how to best treat it so we can save eyes and vision. Um, interested in data results on length of time between reoccurrence. So that's, that's I think, speaks to Ella's point of what we're, we want to learn versus, I'm not sure if anybody studied this, so maybe that's a priority, uh, a, you know, a strategy for co-creation of research. Sometimes there's some like interesting study questions that could be solved with the data we have. I bet Depict could probably solve that. What do you think, Brenda? <laughs> and, um, Step RB, it's a clinical trial that's testing a, a chemo plaque. 
and then drug selection. So which drugs work best to save eyes uh, and in which kids? Go back up to the top, psychosocial. So what is the effect of enucleation and vision loss on retinal glaucoma survivors? Uh, there are ideas for methods for testing vision updates. How do we measure vision? Uh, we talked about the 3D printed eyes for children with enucleated eyes. Could those be um, a, a, another option? And just vision to... outcomes. Yes. Any I don't know if it's relevant to the next section, but just so you're privy to the chat that's happening, there's been oh, a lot of discussion you. from several people about the keen interest in the updates for the cell free DNA and second cancer screening. So, while to the previous point about yeah. how we've done it before, but people might want updates for that topic in particular. So there could be some interest from the group in that. Absolutely. Just so I think know. makes sense that it's top two priority. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's worth revisiting. Okay. Um, and then again, on the topic of second cancer, this is more about what are the risk factors for second cancers in heritable retinoblastoma survivors? And what do heritable retinoblastoma survivors need to know about living well? and minimizing the risk. So that I don't think we've ever focused on um, specifically in a, in a session. So that might be another thing to consider balancing repeats with some new stuff. Uh, miscellaneous, how to improve collaboration across the top centers caring for RB. Do we need an international consortium, a unified registry, combined trials? So uh, maybe we think about that across our provincial borders. I think we do that quite well. How do we do that globally? Follow up, how to provide a detailed pathway of care or plan. Um, Ella Bowles can speak maybe on survivorship, depict health. Um, maybe I'll put it out there. Once our priority nine paper is published, we could have um, the priority nine team speak as well under review. <laughs> so it'd be nice to create a plain language summary for that. Uh, we, we have a plain language abstract, which the team developed at last research symposium. And then global health. Um, someone put a study that uh, I'm doing with my master's student, Omer Jamal, who's volunteering today on the social determinants of health. And so Omer's got some interesting results about how uh, outcomes from RB and other rare eye cancers might be affected by the distance from which you live from the hospital. We've done a, a small study of Ontario patients, so we could share that. Um, collaboration across borders also comes here. Um, showcase research with patient co-investigators and other partners, which I think is important because um, patient partnership, actually a lot of those methods come out of work in low resource settings, um, figure out how best to prioritize scarce resources. We look to patients to find out. And then we've got a whole miscellaneous group. So here we've got um, biobank results. Someone suggested Sumreen as a speaker. So Sumreen, you can have the podium and speak about whatever you want. <laughs> I think maybe because of Sumreen's work with CNIB, maybe also she was up there. Um, uh, Ocularis research. So if there's something more that Ocularis do, Tim Corson, the molecular stuff, other unique perspectives and stories, AI, groundbreaking technology, and how it can uh, be relevant to RB, and updates on broad focus of funders, research organizations. So we've got a big task ahead of taking these 10 priorities and miscellaneous box and deciding what themes we want to focus on so we have eight spots from March, 2024 and every three months after until December, 2025. So that if we know what theme we're working on, we can better work in our breakout groups to decide on who is speaking specifically about what type of research um, and then uh, how we communicate that information using our platform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. Mm. Uh, even do you want to do a, a a poll to see what we drag? Do we want to discuss first strategies? We focus on one each. I would suggest we have some boxes that have a lot of ideas. Perhaps if we go to that box and um, I'm sorry to ask, but read out the ideas again, and we can vote on them. Either if you're in Miro, put your cursor on them, 
or type your vote in the chat so we can get a vote on uh, even at least narrowing down the topics. Do we Does want to suggest we go or the... one per box? Like, do you know what I mean? Maybe we'll want to yeah. do two in some of those. Uh... You know yeah, so we, if we, you know, if people vote for quite a us vote for two or three items, all those three could make it. Sorry. Okay, what's the what's the plan? Do you want to take over? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, I will start with the ones that have the most ideas in them, and we could start there. I would suggest. So if we go with psychosocial, we have one, two, three. We have five um, ideas listed. So we could do, again, if you're in Miro, come to the cursor, bring your cursor to the idea you would like, or please type it in the chat and we will count your vote as well. And we can choose more than one out of here. So if everyone's choosing just one, maybe only one would make it. So you could vote for your favorite and hope that somebody else will vote for another favorite of yours too. So the options are past kids who participated in child life programming has participation helped coping as a survivor has partic so participation um, and coping for survivors next impact on rb on perform <laughs> sorry i cannot read it with the cursors there <laughs> on rb sorry <laughs> on rb on performing activities of daily living i think that's the winner daily living uh, next is technology and AI for daily tasks, coping, uh, and um, the third one, the fourth one is coping um, regarding a nucleation, and the fifth one is using chatbots for generic counseling, genetic counseling. I'm just going to wait to see what people pop up in the chat. Sure. We do have a lot of cursors on two so far. We have um, the impact of RB on performing activities. And we have the coping um, and a nucleation. So I would say those two would move into our themes. Let me see, impact on, we have a, here, let's see. I put stars on the ones that won the voting. Maybe then we could look at how many stars we have and yeah we have, um, impact of rb another vote coping of a nucleation another vote okay so we know we can narrow it under those two maybe we should just take a time okay. keep going okay um in the next box we have a follow-up what is the optimal follow-up um the first option is transition to survivorship next option is long-term patient side effects on current RB, uh, treatments, uh, IAC. The third one is long-term side effects of treatment. Fourth is Bruce Crooks, follow up many dimensions of it. And then- um, Oh, it disappeared. Dr. Galli <laughs> depicts how it addresses each of the top 10 priorities. But it doesn't really fit there. To me, Brenda's, like depict fits in the other follow-up category. It's a, it's in two categories. That's all. I think we should put it in one, should we not? Because right now it's yeah. Another follow Where else up, is it? Sorry. The pathway of care. <clears throat> yes. How to provide a detailed pathway of care or plan outlining treatment follow up. I think it's all there. Yes. So I'm just gonna drag it over. I'm not saying I think we should vote on it. And I, you all know me. I like that one. But for now, let's just narrow it down to these four. If that's okay. Sorry. Sure. Okay. So let's see. We have. Um... A lot of the cursors are on long-term side effects of treatment. We have some on the Bruce Cook's follow-up. And one on long-term patient side effects. Okay, okay. here's comments in the chat. Yeah. Right. A whole bunch of votes for long-term long side effects. Another comment, long-term side effects. I think long-term side effects wins. Yeah. Okay. So now, now this is not the final, um, you know, we can do more in the future. Yes. This is not never to be heard from again. So let's move to the treatment option. There's a lot of options here. So I'm going to go through first treatment outcomes and updates of new treatments. Next, keeping 13Q deletion part of the conversation. 
So it'll be another 13Q topic. Um, the third is Jesse Berry aqueous humor research. Fourth, in, um, data res and results on lengths of time between reoccurrence. Fifth is step RB. Sixth, drug selection, treatments, and saving eyes. And then um, last is COG research. Can you explain COG? COG is the Children's Oncology Group, and they um, they manage a lot of uh, clinical trials for a wide variety of, of uh, cancers. They have a couple of clinical trials for RB. Um, Catherine, I think I see your hand raised. Or not. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to confirm that what we're talking about for any of these is what we're communicating with our our group, correct? That these are the priorities correct. for the communication as opposed correct. to the priorities for doing correct. the research. Correct. Yeah, fine. And, and yes, um, Children's Oncology Group uh, is the oncology organization for research and treatment and yes it does have some trials even if they're not the ones that everybody who's doing retinoblastoma would like to see they are the player in that area and right. so yes they have research the other thing i just wanted to ask our volunteers um i didn't think of it earlier but when people left the room and came back in maybe they can't see the chat from before can you put the miro link in the chat again just so People can come That's in there. and vote. Okay, additional votes we have for step RB, um, treatment outcomes and results between occurrences. There's a lot of treatment outcomes in the chat, even a, whoever's doing the stars. I think treatment outcomes earns a star more so than drug selection. So we've got like four or five votes in the chat, yeah. I think. I don't know. Can count. <laughs> yeah, a lot of treatment outcomes. <laughs> So could I, could I just suggest that the uh, the data results and the length of time between recurrence should be moved over with uh, depict? Sure. Okay, so out of the section we have step RB and treatment outcomes selected. Um, if we can move to another section, I will point you towards the um, top two on the top two boards here, the diagnosis and second cancer. So let's pick between these four. I know they're different, but now we have some options to choose from. Under diagnosis, how to increase early diagnosis of renoblastoma, we have Dr. Malapatna and 3DI models, red reflex. We have Allison Sc um, Scalette for RB guidelines for screening. And for second cancer, we have second cancer probability for RB survival. Can we do one section at a time? Sorry, what are we doing here? Yeah, let's do one, one section at a time so we don't artificially, it's a hard decision. Yeah. <laughs> and we have the two, um, Dr. Malapadna's 3D eye models and red reflex, and Dr. Scalet is the RB guidelines. Looks like a lot of people voting Malapadna couple another one two more 3d model votes in the chat and one more three more 3d model votes and one guideline vote i think 3d models okay the great majority dr malapan are you on the call not yet maybe it says he is he might just be yeah <laughs> yeah okay for second cancer we have no i was i am on the call i was just trying to find my mute button that's oh, okay. all okay all right you but, win. um uh, i didn't know if i was meant to vote or not i would have voted for both if that was the case but okay. um i'm happy to i'm happy to uh, that the 3di models are gaining some focus because there's been a lot of work there this year and uh, and we're close to developing our curriculum and i think that'll make a big difference because um, it intends to train healthcare workers about what retinoblastoma looks like uh, in models before they've actually found it in a patient. So if they train with a retinoblastoma model, then there's a much higher, we think that there's a much higher chance that they would finally detect a retinoblastoma. And that's that's what we're doing right now. 
fighting. Good. Okay, let's vote for second cancer options. We have second cancer probability for RB survivors and cell-free DNA for second cancer screening. So this will be update to the research. I have one for cell-free DNA in the comments. It looks like an even split. <laughs> yeah, on the screen it does. Uh, someone is voting for both. <laughs> it looks like a... Honest to God, it's impossible between those two. I'm like, I both know. Of them. we absolutely, yeah. Maybe, <laughs> there's a way to come, maybe there's a way to put the theme of second cancer and see what the research, like it's maybe it's possible to find a research study that maps out one better than the other in a research update. We could do both. I would Everyone even suggest research chat. updates. Oh, I'm sorry. Are, aren't they the same thing? One is establishing the probability for RB survivors to get a given cancer, and one is establishing the technology to uh, detect it early. But you're right in that once we get the trial started for CFDNA, we're going to have better data on what the probability is for yes. cancers. So, yeah. Um, so we have both to start, which is great. And I, because of the whole CRAB community and the reach out for uh adult RB survivors across Canada, we have a fantastic um, way to answer that question of probability, depending on their treatments, which we know precisely. Right. Okay, um, for psychosocial, what are the effects of enucleation on vision loss on renal stomach survivors? We have a suggestion for vision outcomes, one for um, Mandeep Sagu for the 3D printed prosthetic eye trial and methods for testing vision updates, meaningfully measuring vision. I'm just gonna spread them out. I think we In have a winner. Do we, what did the chat say? Nothing yet for this vote. Okay. On the screen, we have most of the cursors on the 3D printed prosthetic eye. And yeah. we do have some on the left side, their methods of testing vision updates, but I'm not sure people are just floating around. Yeah, I think we put the star on Mandeep. It would be good to hear from that team and introduce them to our crab as well, because they're based in the UK. Um, I'll jump down to the follow-up because we can continue with the voting. Um, the follow-up, how to provide a detailed pathway of care or plan outlining treatment and follow-up to renoblastoma patients and families. We have a topic of survivorship um, with suggestion of Ella Bulls. We have um, Priority 9 update, with, which we did the um, RV journey map. We have Depict Health, um, um, and which is Dr. Galli Depict Health, how it addresses each of the top 10 priorities so that kind of goes together and interested in data and results on length of time between occurrences. I don't think the there's data on the length of time between recurrences in order to be able to share research results. I think that's an that, interesting question. That's not quite true. Oh, really? We're, we're imminently, because we've gone back to look at, at e-cancer care that, that has all the data that Picked Health doesn't yet have. And you can see very, very clear length of time between between recurrences and when they're what time predicts no more recurrence is likely to happen as that research or is that like a, a something that could be done with depict it can be done with depict right. and, but also we also have data on that from our but, but not a um, published research study yet no but, but it's, it's definitely a very short cohort that we have cohorts. Cohorts. so it we'll should be published first. with the step oh. data in the near future like when step okay. gets published it will be part of it Okay, yeah. It's not just the step RB, it will be published as a separate paper on the whole use of the <clears throat> retrospective data for um, exactly that kind of question. I see, okay. To be submitted very soon, <laughs> with luck. <laughs> gotcha, okay. Okay, our chat votes, we have three more votes for Depict Health on the chat and most of the cursors 
Great. On the picked health. Okay. Um, and then below that is the global health. How can optimal renewable system access to care be delivered in low resource settings? Uh, we have um, Helen and Omer paper for social determinants of health, collaboration across borders. And then we have national RB strategies in Ethiopia, Ghana, and Kenya, and showcase research with patient co um, eyes and other partners. This one seems to be split on the screen between um, the social determinants of health and the national RB strategies. I have a comment for social determinants of health, another social determinants. I think those are our two winners here. We can add those two I stars. National strategies is more of a winner or am I just trying to be fair? I know I'm on the call. I don't want to. Social I'm determinants sure. in comments. We have one, two, three in comments of social determinants and one national strategies. Okay. All right. Okay, and the other boxes seem to have just one in each. Um, what about this other box? Yeah, let's vote now on other. So other, we have biobank results. Uh, we have Sumreen sharing her expertise working with CNIB. Ocularis research, sharing unique perspective stories. Next is Tim Corson, RB Molecular Research. Next, we have groundbreaking tech, even if not implemented, AI applic applicability to RB. And last, updates on board focus of funders and research organizations. So most are on biobank research on the screen in Miro. There's some one on ocularis research, one on the molecular research, and one on the groundbreaking tech. Uh, comments have, I have two so far for biobank, three biobank. Okay. I think the majority is biobank here. Okay, great. So now we can zoom out and see how many stars do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We should probably include the two that's that the ones we didn't did. vote on. Yeah. I'm trying to make a list of them at the bottom here that, to give it, if that's helpful. I don't know if that's helpful though. Yeah. Just copy and paste for all of you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them out. Should we drag out the stars? And... I'm just doing it at the bottom. Just go look oh, the bottom are you? Oh, okay. But You're I'm copying. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Thank second. you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I'm not trusting myself. I haven't copied them. So again, we're over time. Sorry, Ivana. I, we're going to have less to do in our breakout sessions, but we need to have this. Okay, so we need eight. We need eight. Uh, we need to choose eight for our um, next two years. I would ask if maybe um, some of the researchers can comment, are there any topics we've selected that don't have research for that we would have a hard time reporting research results on. Is there anything that... So what we wanna do is share research results and these are the, um, right. what we wanna share research results on. Is there something that doesn't have research results that we would have, we could share easily? I can make a comment that perhaps collaboration across borders and national strategies, while not the same, like there's not really much to say about there's one paper my team did on how retinoblastoma centers 
collaborate with each other around the world, but it's related to what we would hear from the national RB strategies. So if those two could go together. I occasionally leave you on there. That was the wrong copy. Sorry. Oh, it wasn't supposed to be there? Okay, good. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried to count. That's that, one extra one. <laughs> right. Helen. Yes. Um, could so I see two here. The second cancer probably probability for RB su survivors and living well and minimizing risks of second cancer, could those be paired together? I, it depends. Um, probably. Oh I'm right, I I see. We already had that discussion about the CFDNA and that being paired. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I'm trying to think yeah. about how traditionally we share research results, and it's usually on the basis of one paper. So right. um, a paper that would tell us what's the probability of um, of developing a second cancer might indicate which groups are at better risk and might give some hints as to how to minimize those risks. Yeah, but I don't know that we there's a lot known about living well and minimizing risk of second cancers. That's really robust research. I don't know, Brenda, Ashwin, Catherine, do you think of any public research or research in the works that we could? Maybe more broad I, stuff I, in the field of oncology. Would there be like not necessarily about RB, but about other like heritable cancer syndromes and how I don't know if there is. Maybe, but like also other typical. cancers get a like very different chemo regimens yeah. and their sure. risks might be. Maybe I'm wrong. Clinicians, please correct me. But other cancers might have much more complex risks as they grow older. I I don't know of anything that speaks to that. For retinal blastoma very much yeah so we Do might we want to in... sorry yes. go ahead ashwin oh no i didn't want to interrupt that conversation go ahead if you had a follow-up yeah i just wondered if we could, that might be one we might have trouble finding something to present to our community living well and minimizing yes. 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 hold on that's my sorry <laughs> per perhaps though that is the point uh, mm -hmm. to to be able to show that there is minimal um, data there. I think there's some, and I think it uh, differs okay. between uh, heritable and non-heritable. Um, but but there's, there's a bit, and then maybe that's the whole outcome thing is to highlight the absence of good data and help us get going on more. Mm -hmm. Could long-term side effects and treatment outcomes, these two go together? Yes. Yeah, I would agree. Okay, do we have um, eight? Um, we have 12 here and we need eight. Okay, now are we combine the two 3D printing projects? I know they're very different, but similar in terms of use of that technology. I'm just uh, thinking about how limited the time he yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> well, but this isn't just a cup of tea. Right. This is research and dissemination topics. Months. So we could do a theme about 3D printing and retinal blastoma and one selected for a blog and one selected for a cup of tea. Unless you want yeah, to three cups sure. of tea. Just in, they're, they're similar in their technology, so, sort of, not in their outcome, I know. I don't know, Ashton, what do you yeah. think? We could. Uh, the other one I was thinking of, maybe we eliminate or less research, but again, it might be my limited knowledge, hoping an enucleation. Mm. Do we have, is there some research in that area? Not that I know of. Yeah, so we might have struggle with sharing anything there. Ashwin has a hand up. Ashwin? Sorry, again, press on the mute button there. But two things there, I think combining the two 3D projects together will not be a bad idea. Okay. 
um so i think combining them may not be a bad idea at all um i think uh, at least it speaks to one sort of technology in one level but that's almost like combining cfdna for screening versus cfdna for aqueous humor that's another thing that could be combined uh, yeah, you know second humor screening that one did we no i mean i i meant it's like that oh, that's I just see. yeah um but the the I don't know if there's an opportunity at any point to look at uh, treatments that are far in the future, uh, a very far looking uh, telescope of sorts, maybe uh, things that might be on the horizon to get a bit more uh, light over here, like, um, like, like viral oncogenes. I don't know if that's a thing, but those sorts of things as well. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think what we're trying to, yeah, because Jenna and I are talking about current yeah. research, or you know, which we said we might want to start doing. In the, I, going but I am hearing that, like, we do want to know what's on the horizon. So I think we need to think in our breakout sessions when we do pursue, when we do share research results. Maybe what we're hearing is we need to link it to what's coming next, so that our community mm -hmm. can begin to distinguish what we know, what works, and where we're going. And if that's what we're doing more consistently rather than having a whole session on what's coming up next, which might have a little bit of research that's known, but maybe not a lot. I like that idea. It's almost like a guiding principle so that we yeah. always show, you know, don't just showcase in a published project, but try and speak to some of the current work for the what's coming. Yeah, like what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Coming. And the blogs could feature that very easily, like a cup of tea. Right. Okay, okay, so we're still this down. I tried, I I don't know if we, we have, definitely the 3D printing is one. That in fact, we were, Step RB would like to be its own entity, that's two. We have the our impact of RBM performing daily activities would be three, deep I call four. These two we said could be grouped, that's five. We still have 10, <laughs> if we group some of them, at least. Are five. there any who don't have new research? Maybe that would help us too. So some that don't have, talked about which one doesn't have new research we've been trying to share kind of new and upcoming um new ground groundbreaking kind of uh, results is there something that doesn't have new um the one thing i'm thinking about uh the, the global stuff If we wanted to get speakers or a cup of tea, we probably wouldn't get them at that time zone. Um, if we, yeah, I don't know. Are you suggesting maybe that is not one of the, not a theme, really theme, but something we could do in addition to our themes as, yes. as a crab group if we had capacity? Yeah, due to and, time constraints, right? Especially because that is the same um, priority as the social determinants of health. Mm -hmm. So maybe we don't need to the global health. I already said maybe we take global health off of a quarterly theme, but not to say we won't showcase it at sometimes on our blog, if, but if um I'm just saying take the national strategies Ethiopia, Ghana, Kenya off because we have the social determinants of health, which comes from oh, the same you're saying we retain that. That's yeah. Right. And then we'd come up with eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, we we'll still have nine. Helen, if you did want a comment from the child life team about what they're doing in Kenya to support yeah. children with retinoblastoma, they would accommodate, but I don't know if it has to be on our list here. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. Like, I, you know, all of us who've been part of the work in Africa, it's, I think the Canadian group would like hearing about it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just wonder in terms of what's more important right now maybe i'm wrong i'll hear from patients what they know, <laughs> what they'd prioritize if something if two things here had to drop what do we want to drop knowing that some of them have less research right now Thanks. step rb <clears throat> is an ongoing oh, sorry. I'm sorry ella oh i was just gonna say um the one thing that i noticed um is that the stuff about Ethiopia, they're they're purple and not green. Yeah. Um, so it means non-patient, right? That's right. For purple. That's right. Yeah. 
so I, I wonder if um, we want to kind of prioritize the green a right. little bit. And um, so maybe, you know, we can take that into consideration. That's a great point. Thank you. I I agree. I would put those three, those, the national strategy, the collaboration and uh, the social determinants all as one. And yeah. um, I would, they'd be further down the line. Perfect. Okay, I think that makes it eight. But that would make it eight if we come, if we merge all those second cancer concepts into one kind of topic for the quarter. Is everyone okay with that? I don't know. We talked about the that other thing is step RB is an update of a new treatment, correct? That's very true. Yes. So how is long term side effects of treatment? like like a which treatment kind of thing or is that a systematic review i just that's what we're going to decide at the step, cup of tea yeah but whether step is its own or part of that topic right. warrants discussion yeah okay but i think yeah. oh, oh sorry pardon me i do think that's definitely a treatment a treatment update to step rb like maybe that somehow step is showcased in that quarter i i agree that could be there Okay. And it, because the data out of that speaks to outcomes. Right. Yeah. I don't know how we'd host a theme of coping and enucleation specifically, but maybe we just go back to psychosocial and. Yeah, a broader psychosocial theme. Mm -hmm. And, that and then that stuff. could be something we look for, but yeah. Yeah. You know, I wonder, I wonder too, like in terms of the psychosocial, like, I, you know, I, I know that you really want to focus on the outcomes of research. Um, I'm hearing maybe a call for a discussion on mm -hmm. that piece. And so maybe if you're presenting the psychosocial, then there can be the opportunity for a discussion, discussion about people's concerns or ideas about coping with nucleation. Um, I've heard this at like several events. Um, and so just an idea, um, you know, I, I know that maybe there isn't direct research on it, but maybe, you know, as I say, like, as yeah, a kind of a sub component or what discussion. I agree. The question is, do we want to like all those discussions can happen in the co-creation, right? These are the mechanisms we want to really show what's happening. So I think we're getting excited because we want to be doing the research. This is the step of making sure we're all understanding the research we want to do by understanding the yeah. evidence thus far. So yeah, I hear you. Okay. What you're saying is important. We got to do it, but I don't want to lose sight of needing to talk about what's known and, and learning together. Totally. And then I just wanted to say um, as a follow-up, to the question about whether or not we feel comfortable combining the second cancer probability for RB survivors and the CFDNA for screening, like I don't see an issue if, so long as whoever is doing that, um, that um, cup of tea feels comfortable combining those. I mean, I, I just, um, mm. yeah, I, I don't see an issue there personally. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, I think what we're doing is picking a theme that CRAB will focus on for the quarter. And then the cup of tea may focus on one part of each of these themes. Right. And the uh -huh. blog may focus on another part of one of these themes. And so oh, for the cup of tea breakout session, if we get there, their job will be to deter, to, to start to try and narrow it down a little bit, a bit more specificity. But yeah, maybe they can focus on it all. I'm not saying they can't. It's just to set expectations. Perfect. Yes. This is, yeah. <laughs> I so forgot maybe, that piece. Yeah. I forgot yeah, that piece. Okay. There could be one blog and one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good, yeah. And Good the other question. thing I'll, yeah. I'll put out there is there's never too much of this. We're picking eight to make it simple. So we have, a you know, something we can, that's feasible. But if we really feel strongly about something that's left out, by yeah. all means, we'll add it. <laughs> so just <laughs> tell us you want to focus on it and it's yours. Okay. So we have our eight here. Um, um and we can definitely coping um, for a nucleation could just be coping or could be psychosocial. So we can um, don't have to be too detailed <clears throat> and we can work with this. I think we're ready to do our breakouts. 
Well, right. we do we need so to decide so which, need which to decide quarter which even? So I put the sort of thing. Yeah, I see what Caitlin's doing. She's got biobank, second cancer screening, 3D. You've got treatment, which is step RB, um, depict, right? We've got um, <laughs> psychosocial, I think. Yeah, exactly. As we said, which would include this perspectives with written creation. And what's the last one? Long term treatment side effects. Yes. And then the daily living, right? Oh. Then do we have nine? What did we forget? No, we're good. Oh, okay. We're good. I okay. think. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to drag them here on top so I can see them when I zoom in so everyone can see them. Um, and we just need to figure out order. It doesn't really matter so much. It, but one thing I might say is something like Steph hasn't quite been. It's very, I know Brenda's working so hard on this. It will be published soon, but maybe it's a later quarter. I don't know if this is a suggestion until at least it's closer to You guys be ready by December? Oh, the, the, it, 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 very December much be, yeah. before that. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Well, it, it will be submitted to a journal. Will they have accepted it? Who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is, since Depict is also your team, Brenda, maybe we spread those out. So they're a year apart. Um, except depict is imminent and we need lots of participation. So well, why don't we do depict? Well, what yes. does everybody think? And then step RB probably will take some more time as a clinical trial to be. Sure, sure. We'll we'll be into a, another trial by that time, which would be fine. Yeah. Ashwin, your team, June 2024, is that good or? I don't know. I also what did yeah, you I, I think that's fine. June <laughs> is great. Okay. Um what else do we need to so biobank, that's our team. I guess what do we want to hear about mid March? I was gonna say, can we do second cancer screening? I'm trying to work on a patient um and non-patient partners for this topic already. So hopefully. Um when Oh, that's a somebody that's already in the works um, for March. I've been, yeah, I've been trying to talk to someone about survivorship. So maybe second cancer could be the the topic that we could focus on instead. It's also psychosocial coping with enucleation. We have a known partner identified already that showed interest that we wanted to engage in the crab community. And he sorry, would be, yeah. It'd be Dr. Hodgson from over at PMH and he does second cancer second screening. Cancer. Okay. So okay. It's, he's not for sure committed to March, but even as working okay. really hard to try and get him to commit okay. and to find a suitable patient. So I think that's, yeah, it may not come Understood. together, but that's the hope. <laughs> right, even that? Did I say that correctly? Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay. It might be too late. Does it really matter the order we do other things? Maybe I'm just putting them in random spots here. Well, biobank, when do we report on biobank? Well, that's, you guys tell me, I don't want to be selfish. <laughs> Any strong opinions on the order? Brenda, yes. I'm, I'm wondering whether you feel like doing Depict in September 2024 might be even more ideal, I, but I don't want to speak for you. So I, I'm, I'm just wondering, just in terms of wanting to get participation and have people hear about it. I, I think that would be fine. We have no trouble talking about it at any time, and that would be fine because it we 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 can we'll be updating and maybe going live and getting centers and I know but the purpose was to be published research right it's not to showcase yeah, right. an innovation right. and so okay. I don't think right. we'll even have depict published in September right. hopefully okay. we'll start a pilot but even okay. even December might be lofty I hope not Brenda <laughs> <laughs> okay we're, okay we're held perfect. up illegal okay. <laughs> yeah okay all right okay is that better 
yeah thank you caitlin for uh, sorry <laughs> no no it's <laughs> so good yeah. no no it's good it's good i get you know this is you guys are like keeping us on track i'm like you know i'm in i'm participating as a in patient mode not in research mode so i'm like this is what i want this is great <laughs> Ellie, love your feedback fantastic okay <laughs> Good. I think we have our plan then. And so that just leaves us half an hour for breakouts, but I think that's enough. Yeah, I think we'll do the best we, we can make that happen. Okay. So we've got three breakouts. Uh, one will be focused on the cup of tea, one the website, one the social media and blog. Make sure to reference all these considerations that we came up with, um, as well as the new plan for the themes. And I think the team will drop us into our breakouts now. Yeah, so breakouts have been pre-assigned. If one, if you're not in a group that you're interested in and you would like to do a different group, please help your group. <laughs> Everybody would need, uh, we would love some different opinions and ideas. And I just noticed Alyssa has to step out, but thanks Alyssa for participating up until now. Appreciate you're here. Sorry, if you wouldn't mind giving me just two minutes to assign everyone to the room and then everyone should join me shortly. Thank you.